figure on. Had to run over here to my parents' shop this morning to grab my three-point spear because we're in for a little bit of a rain shower this afternoon and I'm thinking I need to uh, juggle some things around a little bit. So I got this and I was thinking while I'm over here, I need to grab a wheel off of my disc because the valve stem is bad and it's leaking air and I wanted to try to disc tomorrow. So I think while I'm over here, it's a good time to grab that. The only thing I'm not really sure about is if I have all the right tools to do this with me. Now I gotta figure out which one has the bad valve stem. They both leak, so if they're both flat, this is gonna be very difficult. Well, that one's definitely flat. Oh yeah, I think this one's full. Okay, must be the other one. I wish that I had some sort of a clever segue to move into the intro of the video and lay out exactly what I'm gonna be doing, but I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. This is just what's happening in my life for the next two days. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. is heavy. That ought to do her. Oh yeah. Now I need to see if I can find a block over here to put under that spindle. Oh, looks like there are plenty. Yeah, critters are living underneath nothing. Wow. Oh, that might be too tall. Uh -oh. <laughs> that might be an inch too tall. Please don't fall, disc. That's all I gotta say. Oh. Before I leave, there's one more thing I wanna check on the disc. I think this gang rod on the front gang of the disc, for those of you that don't know, a gang on a disc is like the entire row of blades, if that makes sense. The gang rod is a rod that goes through the middle of all the blades and tightens down to keep everything together. So you can see, I can wiggle that blade a little bit and I should not be able to do that. So I need to cinch this nut down a little bit. Problem is, is that this nut is gigantic and I don't think I have a socket this size. These are difficult to tighten like with a pipe wrench or something because in order to be able to cinch down on that without the entire gang rotating on you, you kind of need to have it on the ground. Well, when it's on the ground, it's you can't really pinch everything together. So you're fighting like two forces when you try to tighten it. The best way to do this would be with um, like a socket on an impact wrench, which I don't have, but maybe that's something I can order. Other things that you could try would be like jamming a piece of wood between the disc and the ground and trying to get it to tighten up that way. So we may end up trying that because um, I'm not sure if I order a socket, how long it'll take to get here, but we'll figure something out. This is two and a quarter. That's a big boy. I don't have the tools that I need to even attempt to deal with that gang rod right now, but I am equipped with the knowledge of what I do need. So hopefully tomorrow, when we come back and put the tire on, I can come up with some way to tighten that up.
We got rained out yesterday, so it is the next day now. And this morning, I'm trying to get these chickens moved onto some fresh grass. If you guys remember a while back, I said I was not gonna try to move them again until I had a second net. And I meant it because I have not moved them since, but I just got a new net showed up uh, yesterday, I think it was. So I'm getting this set up now and I'm gonna try to give the chickens a bigger area, but also the turkeys. And as you can see, they have been in these pens plenty long enough, uh, probably quite a bit too long as a matter of fact, but where they're going is much nicer. As you can see, I've already got part of the new net set up and I think if I've planned this all right, that now, I can start pulling the old one down that will open the chickens up to this new area and then I'm gonna have to sort of build the new pen for the turkeys while they're in it. Hopefully they don't escape, but if they do, I don't think they'll go too far. This one can come out. <laughs> That's looking a lot better for them and I, I have to admit as I'm doing this, I'm like, you know, it, it really is kind of like junky or trashy almost to have all these birds basically in your front yard. But then the other part of me is like, you know, we've got this grass here. This is a great resource for them. And if they're not out here grazing it and picking it down, then I've got to take care of it and I've got to mow it. So that's, you know, more time out of my schedule. So really this is a win-win, although, I get, you know, from the road, it, it might not look that presentable. But this does kind of go to show that you don't need a huge piece of land to grow a lot of your own food. I think this side of the property where all these animals are is about a quarter of an acre. And in that space, we've got 13 layers, five turkeys, eight pigs, and our vegetable garden. The plan is to disc today, but honestly, by the time I get done doing all this other stuff I gotta do, I don't know, we'll, we'll be lucky to get a couple hours on the tractor today. But before we do that, we definitely have to fix this tire, so let's do that now. Thought that would probably happen. There we go. There. Before, when I would fill this tire up, I could actually hear the air coming out and you could feel it around the valve stem. That's how I knew that's what the problem was. And now it's not making any noise and I don't feel anything. So hopefully this is fixed. It seems that these implement tires, after they get to a certain age, they just start having problems. So I don't know how long this will last, but it ought to at least get me through the year. I have very seriously considered getting like a legitimate tire changing machine and wheel balancer. I feel like I have enough vehicles to justify that and you know, every implement's got a tire or two on it as well. So I don't know, something I'm thinking about, but for now, the Harbor Freight Changer's gotta do it. Well, that ought to last for some amount of time. So next, I wanna to try to mess with this gang rod. I think uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, my best bet here is to just sort of try to jam something under one of the blades so that the rest of the blades are up off the ground and as I tighten it, they're allowed to sort of sandwich back together. So we'll give it a try and see what happens. Of course, the first thing we gotta do is get the pin out or the key and that might not be so easy. Mm. 
Spinning on me. A little bit. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Blades feel good and tight now, but I need to turn that nut like another, just a fraction of a turn so that the cotter key hole lines up with the castle nut. Hopefully just stomping on this one more time will do it. I don't know what the heck's going on with this thing. It's it's almost acting like it's running out of threads or I'm not, honestly, I don't know what's happening. So I need it to go like one more degree. That's it and it just will not do it. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take this nut completely off and see if I can figure out what is going on. It's like it's thinking about cooperating. All right, so what? is the deal here. Is that metal? No. I mean, there's a bunch of garbage in the threads. I don't know if that would, I don't think that would really do it. Do it. Looks like my disc blade is cracked all the way around. not good so there is a lot of trash in these threads and the threads are flattened a little bit so that could be why it was fighting me so bad but really I don't see anything here that's like terrible I mean it should have been able to turn one more degree that's all I'm saying This disc blade is cracked all the way around. I, I don't know if the GoPro will pick it up. Let's see, it's moving right here. Maybe we'll just take it off and look at it. So it is cracked all the way around. It, it's kind of holding together still, so I, I think I'm just going to try to run it today for as long as I can and then I know next time I'm in town I need to, to track one of these blades down. Hopefully it'll hold together that long. Um, if you're wondering why I, I don't just weld it, it's because this is a different kind of steel and I've tried to weld these in the past and it just doesn't work. The, the, the metal is so brittle when you weld it that it's, it's really just it's a fool's errand. And that's not just a commentary on my skill. I've, I've asked around and that's kind of the common opinion about welding disc blades. For any application where you're gonna like put the disc blade back on the disc and try to disc with it, don't bother welding. Uh, if you're making a bar stool or something out of it, that's another thing. I'm just gonna put this back together and see what we can do with it. All right, well, stomped on this thing some more. I didn't film it because I think you've seen enough of that already, but here's some good news. I got the disc up off the ground so that the gang can roll freely and the blades are all tight now and my cotter key hole and my castle nut are lining up. So maybe it was just that little bit of trash on the threads, who knows? I think we can put the cotter key back in there and try to run this thing. I don't know how that's gonna go. It looks like a pretty fresh break on the disc blade. I don't think I broke it just now, tightening on it. I think I probably broke it the last time that I ran the disc. And this time going over the field, it won't be under as much stress because we've already broken the ground once. So I'm hoping it can make it through, 
but yeah, definitely something that will need to be replaced. These are the joys of farming, I guess. And I forgot a hammer. Can you believe that? Of all the tools to forget, that's probably the worst one. Of course, maybe it's the best one because anything can be a hammer. Not everything can be a 9 16 wrench. But anything can be a hammer. Look at all this mess in here. Holy smokes. Ay, ay, ay. happened. I heard a bunch of noise coming from the disc. I think I might have blown a tire. Yeah, blew a tire. What is it with me and tires this year and this disc? I don't get it. This, I mean, I guess the good news is it's not the one that we just worked on. It's the other one. But uh, I don't know. I got to figure out what happened here? It doesn't really look like it blew. Must have just run over something. I'm gonna pull ahead a little bit. You guys watch for me. Right here. So I think what happened is I had a plug in that tire and I think the plug just like burst out of it. I, I've never had that happen before, but that, uh, that appears to be what it is. I could chance it and drive the disc back up to the truck on the flat tire, but my concern is that I will make a bad situation worse and possibly remove the tire from the bead or hurt the sidewall or something. As it is now, this is not that bad. I, I think I can fix it. I think we'll drive the tractor back up to the shop and park it for the day and then bring the truck down here, get this tire removed. I don't have tire plugs with me and honestly, even if I did, it wouldn't really matter because I don't have my air compressor with me anyway. So I was gonna have to take the wheel off and take it back to my dad's shop or back to mine. Which isn't that big of a deal, but it's just another thing on top of many other things. <laughs> I guess I've reached the time of year where I probably just better throw the air compressor in the back of my truck and drag it around with me wherever I go until I get this field planted. I was really planning on getting a lot more disc today than I ended up getting done, but just the way she goes. So it looks like right here was the blowout. And I guess we'll just put another plug in there and. See if it holds. There we go. We 
What do you think? Gonna hold? I think I will give that rubber cement a little while to dry before I start trying to put some air pressure in that tire. So now that I have some extra time that I wasn't really planning on having, let's, uh, let's try to make the best of it. Fly season is basically over now. I don't expect them to be much of a problem for the cattle anymore this year. The temperatures are lower now and the fly pressure is really backed off. In fact, I haven't even run the Fussell Farms cow sprayer for probably the last month. Today, I think it'll be a good day to break this thing down, get it moved out of here, get it all flushed out and cleaned out and basically ready to store for the winter so that when I wanna use it again next spring, it'll be ready to go. It was awesome being able to use the Fussell Farms cow sprayer this year and I'm happy to report that after we got through the training period with the cows, which was a little bit more work than I expected, but once we got through that, the fly pressure was significantly decreased and this summer I did not have to treat one single calf for pink eye. I sprayed several different things on the cattle this year in order to get rid of the flies. Uh, I used a permethrin mix, I used just straight Dawn dish soap and water, and I also tried out Fussell Farms' Georgia Juice, which is a, a natural fly deterrent that they mix up and sell. I'm really looking forward to using the cow sprayer next year, and I am really, I'm wondering actually, how much of a training process we're gonna have to go through again. We've got everybody pretty well used to it now, but you never know what cows are gonna forget over the winter time. We might have to go through a, a small training process again in the springtime, but that's all right, because I know how to do it now. If a cow sprayer is something you wanna know more about, there is a link to Fussell Farms in the description below. Guess what time it is. Hmm? Do you know what time it is? That's right, new pasture. And this wire is on, but I really don't want to walk all the way down to the charge box to turn it off. So I'm just going to be careful, try not to shock myself. I can't carry you. I hear a lot of bawling, but I don't see a lot of walking. Rivet and buddy, man, every time. You don't like buddy, do you? Because we're on the final rotation of the year, as I move them into the next paddock, I just leave the wires open. So as they're moving across the ranch, they are every day getting access to a new piece of ground, but then they still have access to everything that they've already been through. Tomorrow, they will move into the middle field and I'll leave the gate open so that they can still have access to the backfield, whatever they can scrounge up out here that they want. And then probably three days after that, they'll go into the front field and, and maybe another two or three days after that, it's time to start feeding hay. The only part of this that I don't have figured out is tomorrow when they go into the middle field, they will be able to get up to those rice straw bales that I made the other day. And I, I've, I've said it several times now, I know they're gonna eat some of those, but as to how much they're gonna eat or how satisfied they will be after eating them is yet to be seen. The goal is to make it to mid-October before I start feeding the good hay, and I've already done that. But now I just, I really want to try to stretch this as long as I possibly can, just because we never know what spring is gonna look like. I mean, look at last year, that's a perfect example. I ended up feeding hay a lot longer than I figured on. And by the time we got to where I didn't have to feed anymore, I think I only had like five or six bales left and that's not a very good feeling. So the longer I can push it and stretch it out in the fall, 
the better position I'm gonna be in in the spring. But like so many things, it's a balancing act. You don't wanna spoil them by giving them hay, but you certainly don't wanna shortchange them either. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.